Welcome to a lesson on an application of a nonlinear system of ordinary differential equations. In this lesson, we'll find the equations of the trajectories for the pendulum equation theta double prime plus g divided by L sine theta equals zero. We've seen this equation before. Recall theta is the angular displacement, g is the gravitational acceleration, and L is the length of the pendulum as shown below. In this equation, we disregard friction, so we are talking about an idealized pendulum. Also notice, the pendulum equation is a conservative equation, meaning it fits the form of x double prime plus f of x equals zero, where the function f is g divided by L sine theta. And because of this, we can use our knowledge of conservative equations to help determine the equations of the trajectories. The first step is to write the given equation as a two-dimensional nonlinear system of differential equations using theta and omega. To do this, shown in blue, we let theta prime equal omega and therefore omega prime equals theta double prime, which using the given equation is equal to negative g divided by L sine theta. Next, we determine the critical points of the system, which is where theta prime and omega prime are both equal to zero. Notice theta prime is equal to zero when omega equals zero, and omega prime is equal to zero when negative g divided by L sine theta equals zero, or in other words, when sine theta equals zero. This indicates the critical points are where omega equals zero, and theta is a multiple of pi, since the sine of a multiple of pi is zero. We have an infinite number of critical points, which are dot, 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 negative two pi comma zero, negative pi comma zero, zero comma zero, pi comma zero, two pi comma zero, dot, dot, dot. While there are infinitely many critical points, they are all isolated. Next, we determine the Jacobian matrix, shown below. In the first row, we have the partial of omega with respect to theta, which is zero, and then we have the partial of omega with respect to omega, which is one. In the second row, we have the partial of negative g divided by L sine theta with respect to theta, which is negative g divided by L cosine theta. And then we have the partial of negative g divided by L sine theta with respect to omega, which is zero. Next, referring to our notes below for conservative equations, there are only two types of critical points. We either have stable centers or saddle points. We determine which type by determining the eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix. To do this, we solve the equation below in blue, which results in the eigenvalues lambda equals plus or minus the square root of negative g divided by L cosine theta. Notice the eigenvalues will be real when cosine theta is less than zero or negative. This happens at odd multiples of pi, and the eigenvalues are going to be purely imaginary when cosine theta is greater than zero or positive. This happens at even multiples of pi. Therefore, the system has stable centers at the points dot, 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 negative two pi comma zero, zero comma zero, two pi comma zero, dot, 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 where theta is an even multiple of pi, and it has an unstable saddle at the points dot, 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 negative three pi comma zero, negative pi comma zero, pi comma zero, three pi comma zero, dot, 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 meaning when theta is an odd multiple of pi. Below we have the graph of a phase diagram where for simplicity, g divided by L is equal to one. Notice we do have stable centers at negative two pi comma zero, zero comma zero, and two pi comma zero. And we have unstable saddle points at negative pi comma zero and pi comma zero. Looking at, the, for, looking at the face portraits below, on the left we have the face portrait for the original system. Next we have the linearization at the point zero comma zero, where we have a stable center. And then on the right we have the linearization at the saddle point, pi comma zero. Let's focus on the original phase diagram and the linearization at the point zero comma zero. In the linearized equation, we have only a single critical point, the center at zero comma zero. Now we see more clearly what we meant when we said the linearization is good for small angles. The horizontal axis is the deflection angle and the vertical axis is the angular velocity of the pendulum. Suppose we start at theta equals zero, meaning no deflection, and we start with a small angular velocity omega then the trajectory keeps going around the critical point, zero comma zero, in an approximate circle. This corresponds to short swings of the pendulum back and forth. When theta stays small, the trajectories really look like circles, and hence are very close to the linearization. When we give the pendulum a big enough push, as shown here on the far right, it goes across the top and keeps spinning around its axis. This behavior corresponds to the wavy curves that do not cross the horizontal axis in the phase diagram. Suppose we look at the top curves when the angular velocity omega is large and positive, for example, along this trajectory here. Then the pendulum is going around and around its axis. 
The velocity is going to be large when the pendulum is near the bottom, and the velocity is smallest when the pendulum is close to the top of its loop. At each critical point, there is an equilibrium solution. Consider the solution theta equals zero, shown here on the left. The pendulum is not moving and is hanging straight down. This is a stable place for the pendulum to be, hence this is a stable equilibrium. The other type of equilibrium solution is at the unstable point, for example, theta equals pi, shown here. Here the pendulum is upside down. Sure, you can balance the pendulum this way, and it will stay, but this is an unstable equilibrium. Even the tiniest push will make the pendulum start swinging wildly. And now let's go back and work on determining the equation of the trajectories. Because we have a conservative equation, the Hamiltonian, or one-half y squared, plus the integral of f of x dx equals c, is conserved by any solution. Or if we go back to the pendulum equation, notice our function f is f of theta equals g divided by l sine theta, and the integral of g divided by l sine theta with respect to theta is negative g divided by l cosine theta, and therefore the Hamiltonian is one half omega squared minus g divided by l cosine theta equals c sub one. And again, this is conserved by any solution. This is the energy or the Hamiltonian of the system. To solve this equation for omega, we would multiply both sides by two, and then take the square root of both sides of the equation. If we let two c sub one be the constant c, we have the trajectories are given by omega equals plus or minus c square root of two g divided by l times cosine theta plus c for various values of c. And now let's look at the initial condition theta sub zero comma zero. That is, we take the pendulum at the angle theta sub zero and just let it go with the initial angular velocity of zero. We plug the initial condition into the above equation and solve for c, which I've shown here in blue. Solving for c, we have c equals negative two g divided by l cosine theta sub zero. So going back to our equation for omega, if we replace c with negative two g divided by l cosine theta sub zero, we have this equation in blue, and if we factor out two g divided by l, we can write omega as omega equals plus or minus the square root of two g divided by l times the square root of cosine theta minus cosine theta sub zero. I hope you found this helpful.